Hey, how you doing? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another time here. Welcome to another time in the opera room, another time to pray, another opportunity and privilege to pray. So thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Uh, we, uh, we've been doing a study through the book of Proverbs as we lead ourselves in a place of prayer. We've been here in the book, in the chapter five for some time now. And uh, we've been looking at verse 15 for some time now. Uh, we'll pretty much uh, close up 15 yesterday. We'll move on to verse 16. Uh, verse 15, 16, 17, and uh, 18, 19 are pretty much connected. And we'll tie all of that together later on. But for now, let's take them one by one. We've looked at verse 15. Let's look on verse 16, which is a continuation of verse 15. And also all of them a continuation of the whole of the chapter itself. You know, verse 15 goes on and ties on to 15. 15, we've been looking at you, you um, taking care of ourselves. And and drawing from my own drinking from my own system, drinking from water from my own well, you know, drawing from the depth of that which God has already provided inside of us, the resource, making use of the resource that God has given to us, not being bewitched by all people who will try to devalue what God has given to us. People will try to make us want to be like them instead of being like the person. God has created us to be, you know. So we go on to verse 16, and it's pretty much a continuation there. It says, Should your should your should your fountains be dissipated in abroad, streams of water in the street? It's pretty much saying, Should you be wasting your resource? Right? Should you be wasting your resource? Right? Drink from your own system, make the best use of it, right? You know. You should not be throwing your resource abroad, you know, without sense, without thinking about it, without doing it with wisdom, without doing it in such a way as to be profitable by it. You know, it's just talking about being um, responsible in the, excuse me, being responsible in the management of the resource that God has given to you. You know, I love that. And I was just meditating on that. I just remembered uh, Miles Monroe. The one powerful quote from Miles Monroe as he was teaching on something related to this, you know, and he was looking at uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, you know, and Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 tells us that God brought Adam into the garden, you know, to, to, to tend it, to take care of it, to manage it. God prepared the garden and brought Adam and Eve there, not for the intent of just staying there. Oh, God has provided. Oh, let your servant go and rest. No, the, there was a purpose. There was a job for them to do. It was to tend it. It was to take care of it. It was to nurture it. It was to manage it. It was to take care of that which God has already done. Maintain the value God has already put there and increase the value. Don't allow the value of that garden to depreciate. Rather, maintain what you have been given and increase the value. That's what it means to tend, to nurture, right? So God put Adam, put Adam in, in the garden to tend it, right? God had finished his work. However, there was still more to be done. You know, we are here to extend, to continue the work of creation that God has done. God has done as it were the foundation you know but there's more that we can do you know we can we can we can build chairs god god didn't create chairs you know uh god 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 didn't create the the, the products that would get from the natural things you know that god put in us a brain for 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 a reason is to continue the creation work that he has done. He has made us like himself. God envisaged what he wanted and he called it into being. In the same way, we are created like God to envisage new worlds, new things, to extend, to, 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 to extend, to continue that which God has begun. He thinks is that that which God has done should not reduce in value. It should be maintained and increased. 
maintained and increased, maintained and increased. So that's what Mars Monroe said. He said, where there's no management, God retards growth. God stops growth. When there's no management, God retards growth. God retards growth when we're not doing our job to take care of the resource that he has provided. Let's pray. Mark. Yeah, so we're still looking at Proverbs chapter 5. We pretty much closed out on verse 15 yesterday. We started with verse 16 today. And pretty much he's just talking about that don't waste your resource. He's saying that will you throw, um, he, he reads, he says, um, let me put on my glasses. It says, uh, should your fountains be dispersed abroad, streams of water in the street, you know, will you just be throwing your water away in the street? First of all, verse 15 says, drink from your own system, drill from your own well. Don't waste your resource. Don't despise your resource. Don't despise that which God has given to you. Manage it, tend it, make it better. Let God be proud that he gave it to you. You know, that's what God did, you know, when the master gave those that talent to those servants when he was going away. He was expecting that they would trade with it. They would bring profit. Profit was on the mind of the master. Profit is on the mind of God. You know, the one that gave, was giving five brought back additional five. He was congratulated. The one that gave two was brought another two. He was congratulated. But the one that gave one, he said this master is wicked though. He will take what is not his own. If I make profit from it, he will just take it. Instead of making another one, he went to hide it. And the words of the master are important because they are life-giving. He says, can't you as well at, at, at least put this money in the bank? Let there be profit from the bank. You did not even allow it to go to the bank. You just went to hide it, bury it. When it would, is depreciating rather than increasing, it's not even maintaining its value. If nothing else, if you are that lazy that you can't trade with it, give it to someone else to trade with. You know? And he says that th uh, those that think they have nothing, even that which they have, I mean that everybody has it's something. Away from them. Will be taken away from them. You know? Mm -hmm. God gives everyone something. Mm -hmm. We should not commonize it. The one that was given one, commonize it. Thought he was, was giving little. Bible says we're giving according to our ability. When it comes to God, it's not about equality. God does not give anything equally to anybody. His, his humanness or our finality that mm. thinks about equality. God does not do anything equally. He does things equitably. Equitably. He's, he gives you according to your need. Even when it comes to faith, the Bible does not say that he gives us faith, the same faith too. You know, the Bible says do everything according to the faith that's given to you. Meaning that everybody is given different levels of faith. But you have given enough faith to live the life that God has given you to live. You don't need another person's faith to live your own life. The faith that you need to live your life victoriously, God has given it to you. Don't look at another man's faith. It's your faith. Treasure your faith. Appreciate your faith and use it. Because that faith grows also. When I use the little faith that I have, I will have more faith. If I can believe God for one penny, I can believe God for two pennies. If I can believe God for two pennies, I can believe God for four pennies. If I can believe God for four pennies, I can believe God for eight pennies. If I can believe God for eight pennies, I can believe God for 50, 50 pennies. Yeah. That faith increases. Faith is not, it's not, it's not static. But it only increases when we use it. If you don't use your faith, you could not grow. If you have not tested and tried God in one small thing, you cannot try him in a big thing. Right? That's the problem with people when, they, when it comes to marriage. They, they've never heard from God in their life before. Then when it comes to marriage, you want to hear from God. How will you hear from God now? You have never heard from God from, from the smallest details of your life. It's not the big one you want to hear from God. You obviously make it big. Right? If you have not developed that little faith you have in the small details of your life, when when adversity is, eats you, you'll make a mistake. Oh. See, that's the problem with people. That's why people go into depression. Because when trouble comes your way, that's where you're not running to go. Oh, God, speak. Oh, God, saw the miracle. Oh. <laughs> miracle should be a day, something that we experience every day of our life. So that no matter the circumstance of, of, of life, you are doing something you've always done. That's what happened to David, though, when he came against Goliath. It wasn't the first time he was fighting, though. 
Some of us just want to fight the day we see Goliath. No, it wasn't the first time he was fighting. He had fight. He has fought with the tiger, with the with the with the uh, with the lion. He has fought with the tiger. He has he has he has done it in little little things because he has done it in little little things. And God came through for him. He has learned how to use his faith. So it was easy for him to use his faith for Goliath. Because he has used his faith in other small mundane things in his life. He has seen God come faithful in those little things. So he believed it. So it was easy for him to now go to the next level. Because if God can do this little for me, then God can do this much. But we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we, don't, we only come to God when we're in crisis and we'll miss it. We'll miss it. We don't find God in crisis if you have not found him in the every details of your life. May he help yeah. us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Go ahead, ma. Oh, we bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I thank God for, for his listening ears to us on daily basis. Amen. Not a man that could lie. And, uh, and he's not a man that could repent. Amen. I give him all the glory for what he did in, 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 the, in my community. The, there was a time we were in prayer. And uh, I was able to connect the woman to prayers. Mm. I'm giving this to the glory of God. Man. Because there was a challenge in her life. She mm -hmm. happened to be one of my um, neighbor and mm. the congregation in the church. Mm. And then uh, when this place came into the family, early that morning, as I was praying, I had to pray and see. That was why I could connect to the prayer. And I mm. told God, God will revisit. He will mm. answer and will not delay. He will Amen. allow his soul to find a way to bring mm. him back to you. To the mm. glory of God, this soul has come back home. Amen. Amen. I'm Amen. using it to testify that our God is not a liar. Yeah, absolutely. I promise us that as we are close to him, he will be close to us. Amen. He will be there for us. Amen. You know, the ground we have on daily basis is a holy mm. ground. And Amen. I can only encourage the man of God mm. to relent in this effort. Amen. Continue. It is God Amen. that is chaperoning, not any Amen. man. Amen. Whether you see men behind you or not, Mm -hmm. It's a holy ground, and Amen. the voice that cries on daily basis, mm -hmm. the Lord hears. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Ma. Okay. Thank you, Ma. Uh, God be praised. I show. I show. I show. God. God be praised. May you receive all the glory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mm -hmm. name, and it will only get better in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. yeah, get better in Jesus' name, you know, and that's what hopefully we'll be able to continue tomorrow. It's just Genesis two fifteen. Everything God has placed in our hands, He says that He must He must maintain or increase, maintain and increase, maintain and increase. He must mm -hmm. never fall down. Mm -hmm. When God puts that 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 banner in our hands, is to maintain and increase, because it says He wants us to tend it, to nurture it, mm -hmm. you know. Tend it to nurture it. Everything God placed in our hands to so tend it to nurture it. You know, our family, our spouse, our business, our job. Tend it, maintain it. Tend it, maintain it. Because if we don't do that, God cannot breed on it. Mm. God does not breed on things that we're careless that we're careless with. Mm. Mm. When we're not careless with it, when we mm. give attention to it, then God breeds on it. You know, but if we don't put our mind to it and do our part to nurture it, God cannot breed on it. He does not put his spells. He doesn't give his spells to pigs. We have shown that we're not pigs by the way we nurture that which he has put in our hands, you know, and his name will be glorified continually in Jesus' name. He will show himself strong in our life. You know, he will, he will show his name in our life. You know, when, when we tend and nurture that with God, has put in her hands, he places his name on it. He begins to boast about it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't by coincidence he was boasting about Job. He said, ha, ha, have you considered my servant Job? Mm. You know, 
And God wants to do that for every one of us. He wants to boast about us because he wants to put his name on us. You know, he wants mm -hmm. to breathe upon us. He wants to increase us. He wants to be able to, now the Bible says, the Ephesians says that, you know, it is the intent that he will conform. He will show his manifold wisdom to the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. He wants to do that through us. Jesus mm -hmm. Christ is seated at the throne, you know, until he, all his enemies have made his footstool. Well, who is the person to make his enemies? So it's the church. It's you and me, you know. But we can't do that if we're not tending that which he has put into our hands. When we tend it, he breathes on it. He shows his wisdom through us. You know, he compounds the kingdom of darkness, you know, through us. And he will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Hey, Palema. Hey, have a great remaining of today. You too. All right, see you tomorrow, God willing.